All right, what's on the bench? Uh, it's a Keithley. I love the Keithley stuff. It's a Keithley 227. Now, um, you know, <laughs> sometimes you just, you can't, you know, can't get out of your own way. I was on eBay and I thought I knew what I was looking at and I saw a really good price, so I went ahead and bought it. And now that I have it, it's not what I expected. <laughs> but that's okay. Now I have one. Um, I thought it was a, a, a way to dial in Pico amps, but it's not. It's a way to dial in lots of amps. Um, not lots of amps, but a lot, like up to an amp. At very high voltages, like up to 300 volts, too. So it's a different beast than I thought I was buying, but now I have it, so I have to love it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, it has a voltage compliance up to 300 volts, and then it has uh, two ranges. Of, so the data sheet for the 227 doesn't seem to match this unit, so I don't know if there was a revision or anyway. Um, it does plus and minus current, which is bipolar. That's pretty cool. You can measure volts and measure amps on the little meter here, times one and times 10. Um, I guess this is the input here. It says zappy zappy. Uh, and you can float or you can ground the low. Uh, it tells you whether you're in you hit the compliance for the voltage. Um, it's similar to the unit that I tried to repair for my friend, the HP, what it was, a 60, 6177, something like that, 8177, I forget. Um, you, the way that you use it is you put it on open uh, and you change the compliance voltage that you need and then you put it on short and you short it out and then you set the current that you want and then you put it on operation, so that operates the same way. Um, so one of the big downsides of this thing is the fan. Sounds like a, uh, we're gonna take off any second. So I don't like the fan, um, <laughs> but uh, before we do much with it, let's take a look inside. Uh, the other surprising thing was, if you're looking at a um, pico amp current source, pico amp current source, it's not many. It should be a real light instrument, right? This thing weighs weighs a ton. Uh, what's the data sheet say here for weight? Yeah, this thing weighs 24 pounds. <laughs> 24 pounds. It is a beast. So why is it so heavy? Let's take a look inside. All right, it's got this giant transformer. I think this is the biggest transformer. Maybe my MSI had one about this size, but it's like one of the largest transformers I've seen. My MSI had a giant, giant transformer in it. This one is big. And then there's this heat sink here, this massive heat sink with a big ass fan, big giant, probably 110 volt, yeah, 110 volt fan, just whoosh. Um, <laughs> it's a beast. It is a beast. Uh, it does look vintage. I was reading some date codes here. Uh, 82. Uh, 1974 for the op amp. Hmm. Uh, 82. Here's another 82. So there's an 81. So we'll call it 82. Somewhere around in there. Uh, I did, um, well, Let's take a look at the back. You need to look at the back. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, gosh. Uh, can you see that? Uh, it's got a rear input as well. Voltage program, current monitor, voltage monitor, output. Uh, set the voltages. Yeah. Oh, jeez. All right. So um, one thing I did notice when I opened it up is there's a fuse up in the front. And that fuse is blown. So, maybe we need to change the fuse. Uh, but I say we power it up and see if it does anything at all, and then we'll worry about that fuse. All right, uh, I might not be able to talk much when the fan's on here. Woo, that's going. 
All right, let's see if we can look at some volts here on the meter. We'll go to open. Yeah, we got volts. And oh, and we can we can change them. Times one, times ten. Uh, that that looks goofy. That looks goofy right from the get go. Um, but at least it does something. Uh, yeah. So there's this knob here that's marked funny. I think on other models they mark them differently. But anyway, this this range is here. Um, so this one is 10 milliamps full scale, 100 milliamps full scale, and 1,000 milliamps full, full scale. So yeah, it's not what I thought it was. Not what I thought. I wanted the real Pico M one. Oh well. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, change that fuse. See if that helps things. Whew. Sorry about that. Uh, it's a one eighth one eighth fuse, which I don't know if I'm going to have one, but we can just live dangerous and pop something else in there. Blown fuse. What fuse was in there? Was it a was it a one eighth or something else? Yep, one eighth amp. All right, let's see if I can find one. Uh, I don't have a good organization for my fuses, so we will just have to look around. Amp and a half. Amp and a half. Those are all amp and a halves there. And uh, try to find one with a real thin wire. Uh, Real thin wire, this is two amps. Oh man. 250 milliamps. That's double, that's not bad. Maybe we can keep that one around. Let me, let me spend some time looking through my fuses and get back with you. All right, being the very impatient person I am, I'm gonna put a 250 in here and we will live dangerously. Let's see if it's going to work. And I had the wrong size fuse. Of course. It's a funny size fuse as well. Oh, man. All right. Back to the drawing board. All right. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, it does seem to be working somewhat. I don't know exactly what. But I have the selector on on. And... Uh, I can change the voltage output. So there's, uh, if you can see that, can I push the, uh, there we go. I guess a little bit better. 45 volts, 200 volts, 300 volts. Yeah, so it outputs volts. Uh, so that's good. Let's put it down here to something safe. Um, and the little meter does work. So it's kind of a funky meter. So. It shows plus and minus volts, and so on the times one scale, it means you make the reading as is. The times 10 means take that number and multiply it by 10. Okay, so if I go here, then uh, that should be about 100 volts. And yeah, so anyway, it's kind, of, it's kind of funky. Let's go down to the safe range down to the 20 volt range. Okay, that sounds good. And now it's supposed to be outputting current. So do we dare measure current? Uh, let's see, this thing is fused at 440 milliamps, so no. Let me get some other probes out and we'll see if we're getting, see if we're getting one, see if we're getting one milliamp here. So this would be, this would be one milliamp. And at 20, 20 volts. Okay, so let me get a different set of leads. Okay, so the meter is good for 10 amps. So this thing will not output 10 amps. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And uh, I'm measuring a milliamp, maybe. Let's change the, let's change the range here. That should be 10 milliamps. 
Yeah, 10 milliamps. Okay, so I can go over to the other scale. I don't feel bad about that now. We can go to uh, milliamps. There we go, 10.5. Here's 10, 11. Uh, maybe dirty contacts, yeah, probably dirty contacts. So there's 10, 20, yay. That seems to work. Is there one, yeah, 10 milliamps. And uh, let's see, I'm really nervous about the knob. Let's see here, let me go to open. Okay, uh, yeah, let's go back to this one. On 1.7. Yeah. Okay. I think I need to clean the clean the knobs, but I think it's working. One milliamp. Thirty-one milliamps. Yeah, that's not right. Why are you thirty-one milliamps? Who's who's not playing our game? Huh. Oh, there we go. It's this knob. Uh, the potenti potentiometer is probably bad, yeah. Potentiometer is bad. 2.7, no, 3.7, no. Yeah, I think all of our knobs need to be clean. All the switches need to be clean. All right, get rid of that noise. Whew. All right, that's the video for the day. Uh, something I don't need and <laughs> something I don't want, but now I have it. Uh, how much time do I invest in something that I can't love too much? Uh, probably not a lot. Um, but yeah, let me, let me clean it up and we'll see. Maybe I can find a better home for it.